This is a tutorial on changing windows to a graph on the calculator. Now let's first take a look at example 1. So here we have the equation y equals negative 0.5x squared plus 5.5x. Now in order to even change a window we first need to have this equation into our y equals. So we can see its graph. So we'll put in negative 0.5x squared plus 5.5x and now graph it. So right now we could see part of the parabola but we can't see the vertex and we also can't see the other x-intercept over here on the right side. Now let's say we mainly want to focus on this area. How can we get that into the correct window? Well first of all we don't need any of this extra negative x space so we could get rid of that by going to our window and reducing our x min. So right now it's at negative 10. Let's change it to negative 2. And now graph that. So at this point we've gotten rid of some extra space that we're not looking at in the second quadrant. Now if you notice we also have a lot of extra space here in the fourth quadrant. So we don't really need that. So let's get rid of some of this space down here as well. So to do that we'll go to window and the area in the fourth quadrant is like the negative y axis or the negative side of the y axis. So what we could do is instead of having our y min being at negative 10, let's raise that up to negative 2. Now graph that. So now we've gotten rid of that extra space as well. Now let's try to move over on our x-axis so we can see this other x-intercept here. So to do that we'll go to window and at the moment our maximum x-value is 10. But that's obviously not far enough because we can't see all of the right side of our parabola. So let's make that a little wider. Let's try 15 and see how that looks. Now that we graphed that now we could see the right side of our parabola a lot better. Now all that's left is to see our vertex. So as of right now, the highest that our y value goes is 10. But we need to make that even further to be able to see our vertex. So let's go back to our window and change our y max to be bigger than 10. So let's try 15 and see how that works. Now that did allow us to see more, but we're not quite there yet, so we need to go even further on the y-axis. So let's go back to our window, and let's go a little further with our y-max. So instead of our highest point being 15, let's make it 20, and then hit graph. Now we could see our vertical and horizontal intercepts, as well as our vertex. So this is a pretty good window to use to find various pieces of information on this particular graph. Now let's try a different example. So this time we've been given various points and we want to create a window that will allow us to see all of those points. Now before we start putting these points onto a coordinate plane, let's first take the time to find out what our lowest x value is and our highest x value and then do the same thing for our y values as well. Find the lowest and highest y value. So starting with the lowest x value, from the four points we have, we could see that negative 14 is the lowest x value. So we could say that our x min is negative 14. Now as for the highest x value, from these four points, we have 18. So our x max will be 18. Now let's look for the lowest y value. From these four points, looks like the lowest y value will be negative 15. So we could label our y minimum as negative 15. Now as for the highest value for our y, looks like we have 20. So our y max will be 20. Now let's get these points onto the graph. So the easiest way to do that is to go to stat and then edit and then here we have different lists. 
Well, each list represents a particular variable. So what we could do is we could have L1 represent our X values and L2 represent our Y values. So in L1, we'll put in all our X values. So negative 14, negative one, six, and then 18. Now in L2, we'll put in the corresponding Y values. So negative 14 had a Y value of nine, negative one, had a y value of 20, 6 had a y value of negative 15, and then 18 had a y value of 2. So now that we've done that, in order to actually graph these points, we need to turn their plot on. So we'll hit second, y equals, which takes us to the stat plot. So hit enter on the first one. Now you notice that's turned off. So we could go and hit enter on on to turn it on. And right now the type of graph is that it'll just plot the points. And that's what we want. And then L1 is our X values and L2 is our Y values. Now let's hit graph. Now you may notice we don't see any of the points on our graph right now. That's because they're all outside of this window range. So we need to change that. Now what's nice is we figured out all our minimums and maximums earlier. So let's just plug them in and see what we get. So our x min is negative 14, and our x max is 18, and our y min is negative 15, and our y max is 20. So now let's try graphing that. So now we could see all four points, but we can't see them very well. That's because we made our windows be right on the edge of where each of the points are. So if we want to be able to see them a little clearer, we need to extend our window on all sides. So what we could do is go to our window, and instead of negative 14 for our x min, let's go a little further than that. Let's say negative 20. We're going more negative because that brings us further out in the negative direction for the x value. And then for x max, let's extend that out further in the positive direction. So let's say 25. And then let's do the same thing for the y min. Let's go further in the negative direction. So let's put negative 20. And then for our y max, let's also go further to say 25. Now let's try that. So now we have a window where we can see the points more clearly and still have a little bit of space to work with. So this could be an ideal window for this particular plot of points. Now you may notice that our axes on our coordinate plane look a little cluttered. Now it's not really essential, but we can fix that so that our graph looks cleaner. Now the way to do that is to go to Window, and then there's these two options that we haven't touched on yet, X scale and Y scale. What that does is it tells us the increments for each tick mark on that particular axis. So right now, our X axis has a tick mark for every unit along that axis. Now instead of it being at one, we could change those increments to be something else. Let's say five. So now there will be a tick mark for every five units on the x-axis. Now let's do something similar with the y-axis. Let's change its scale to be five as well, so that it has increments of five for each tick mark. So now when we graph it, you'll see that our coordinate axes have cleaned up a bit. So now every tick mark you see on here represents five units along that axis. Same thing for the y-axis as well. So what's nice about changing the scale on your axes is it allows you to be able to read your graph better and to have a better idea of where the various points are. And that's how you change windows for a graph on a calculator.